Hey everybody, this is Brother Rob, a pastor of the Jesus Name Pentecostal Church, and this is your Sunday recap video. And uh, if you missed the service today, we missed you. And uh, if you missed the service today, you missed a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost, even in our Bible classes. The passion and the power of God's Spirit was resting on all of us and challenging us to rise up and be the church through prayer, intercession. And I want to give you a quick recap on our Sunday message. It was taken from Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. This is the parable of the talents. And the title of the message today was The Haves and the Haves Nots. And the first thing we see in the story is that the master calls his servants to him, and he gives each of them opportunity according to their ability. Although they're not all given the same amount of money, they are all given the same opportunity. Because the master knew that not all of them could handle the same amount of responsibility. And so he gave them opportunity according to their responsibility. God always levels us up, gives us things that we cannot reach or attain on our own. We can handle them if we had them. And so God gives us things that we can't like buy or, or somehow achieve or attain on our own. But he doesn't give us those things as a reward. But he gives us those things as a test. The men that received, the servant received five talents, another servant received two talents, another servant received one. And this wasn't a reward for them. This was a test. And then the master went on his journey. And, and the, the man with the five talents, the servant with the two talents, they went out immediately and made more money. They went out immediately. They'd been watching their master and learning his ways and were loyal to him and inspired by him, and they knew this was an opportunity of a lifetime, and they had been watching him, learning from him, and as soon as his caravan was out of sight over the hill, they immediately went to work, multiplying the talents and money that had been entrusted to them by the master. But something went wrong with the third servant that got the one talent, and he, for some reason, decided that it was okay to bury his talent in the ground, to hide it, the Bible says. The Greek word is crypto. So he decides he's going to get involved in this cryptocurrency. And this is not going to go well for him. Just like it didn't go well for Achan when he hid what he stole under his tent. Hiding, if, 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 you're, if you're doing something that you have to hide, you shouldn't be doing it. And if you're hiding something that you should be doing, you need to get cracking on it. And so, of course... A master returns, and he calls his servants in for accountability. And the first two servants turn over the original investment, and then they turn over an extra over and above what they had been given. The man that had five talents, servant had five talents, he, he gave five more, so he turned in ten. And the servant that had two talents, he, he turned in four. And the master was very pleased with them, complimented them, and then he rewarded them. He rewarded their trust. And they were each given much more responsibility, much more ability to do things, and then also became close friends with him, entering into his joy, the fellowship with him. But the, the third servant came, and he said, Well, I knew you were a hard man, and I knew that you gathered where you, that you hadn't sowed, and or you reaped where you hadn't sowed, and you gathered where you hadn't scattered. And, and so here, here's your one talent back. And a very snippy and nasty-spirited uh, servant. And the master was extremely upset with him. And he's really actually accusing the, uh, the master of being hard to get along with. He's accusing him of being a dishonest businessman. And so the master just lets him have it. And he said, you wicked and lazy servant. You wasted my time. You wasted my money. And he said, take 
take the talent that he has and give it to the guy that has ten. And in Luke, the same story, they, they, the, the servants exclaim, you can't give it to the ten, he already has ten. And the master said, unfazed, take this wicked servant and throw him into outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because we're going to be accountable for the things that God has given us. We're going to have to give an account. Everybody has the same opportunities. Although we have different abilities, we have the same opportunity. And the opportunity is to make something of ourselves, to glorify God. If you have breath, if you have a life, you've got hands and feet, then you have an opportunity to do something with the life that God gave you. But if you waste it, you're going to be completely, everything's going to be taken away from you. That's why we get the haves and the have nots. So the master, when he got done, they exclaimed, you can't give it to the one with the 10. He's already got 10. And the master said, to him that has will be given more. To him that has not, even what he has will be taken away. Because God doesn't view fairness, and God doesn't view the haves and the haves nots like we do. We view the haves as people who are spoiled, get everything handed to them on a silver platter. We, we view the haves nots as people who have it hard, and they don't have a chance, and we feel sorry for them. But the master didn't see it that way, and God doesn't see it that way. He sees the haves as people who take the bull by the horns and get cracking on their opportunities, and do what they can with what they have. And he sees the have-nots as wicked and lazy. They refuse to act, even on the little bit that they have. And he's like, you know, why should I waste, and why should we waste resources on this, this derelict, worthless servant who won't do anything with even what the little bit that he has? Take it away from him and give it to the one who has more. Because he's doing something with what he's got. And so the challenge for the church is to get busy and make more and become more. If God has given you a talent and ability to sing, then sing. Sing like you've never sang before. If God has given you the ability to cook, then cook like you've never cooked before. Don't hide your talent. Don't hide your, the abilities that God has given you into the dirt. And you can look up uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, for more reference on this, it talks about the gifts of the Spirit and the body of Christ. And then you can also look up Romans 12. There are a million things that we can do. And whatever those things are, when we find those things, the Bible says do them with all of our might. So don't make excuses. Don't run in fear. Don't be wicked and lazy. But get excited about the chance that God has given you. Go out with passion. Do everything that you know to do to make things happen that God has given you the privilege to do. And when he comes and gives an, and you give an accounting to him, then he's going to say, you've been faithful with what I trusted you with. Now I'm going to reward you with things that are beyond your imagination. So work hard and get ready for the reward. Be lazy and get ready for the punishment. We love you. God bless you. Have a great week.